Hey there, amazing that you're here at SMAC. We hope that you're going to enjoy the content. If so, comment, like, and stay with us. Enjoy what we have for you. Hi, my name is Hubert Virio. I'm the CEO of uh, Yotel, and I'm uh, delighted to be on SMAC today. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Smack Hospitality Podcast. First and foremost, Happy New Year 2024 on behalf of everybody here on Smack. This episode features Hubert Virio, the CEO of Yotel, and Hubert and I discussed what the traveler of tomorrow looks like, the importance of branding, and which locations are of particular interest and why to a company with a unique hotel product like Yotel. Enjoy the show. Uh, bienvenue au Smack. Thank you for being here. Um, great to see you. Happy New Year, first of all. Uh, Thank you. Happy New Year to you too. Um, and, and, and I'm glad we, we, we found some time to this. Um, I'm going to start with a very easy one. Hubert. If I've never, ever heard of Yotel, give me the, the, the dirty two, three sentences about what's, uh, what's to know about Yotel. Smart hotels, right? It's the, it's the long and the short story, you know, yeah. uh, doing hotels differently, smartly, intelligently for a new bride of customer. Um, you know, um, of any age, yeah. any age group, but looking for a better experiences at a, uh, in great locations across the world and um, a very efficient experience and something different, yeah. you know, and that's that's the crux of the matters is your hotel is different. And we've been designed from day one as a independent hotel company, yeah. which is um, uh, trying to Reinvent is pretty too hard a world, but certainly shakes things up in the yeah. hospitality world and and look look at this industry with a fresh pair of eyes and and understand what today's customer want yeah. and trying to address that. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna start with a confession, if you don't mind. The year is it must have been 2010, maybe 2011, somewhere there, and it was the first time I heard about Yotel and walked into a place called um, at the time, I'm not sure if it's still called that. It was it was the it's the Yotel in New York, just off. Um, I, 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 I forget the exact address. Tenth Avenue and Forty Second. Well, yeah. exactly. Mm. I, I had a feeling you might know. Um, <laughs> and and it was it was an absolutely incredible. Um, it, it, granted, 2010 through something. So this was eleven. You know, a, a good uh, eleven. Okay, mm. there we go. Mm. Um, and it was, and I remember because I was there um, for for the university that I went to at the time, and and they did a, a, an information session for for students that might be interested in coming to Europe to study there. And I kid you not, it was probably to this day, and I'm not saying this because you're on the podcast. It was probably to this day one of the most fun hotel experiences I have had. And and those of those of you that have not been there. Um, I'm not sure it's still the same, but you come and the, and the reception desk is on is is on a, is on a given floor, and there's a restaurant just behind it, and it is an it was an absolutely wild place. There was a DJ playing, yeah. which for the year 2011 was mm. an entirely new idea. Mm. Obviously, the world is a different place now, mm -hmm. and and then I did, and this was the first time I heard of your hotel, and then I did some research and I found out that you also do, obviously do a lot of airport hotels, and I realized again that business model has changed, mm. and 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 you've developed this further, and so on and so forth. How important or how much ahead of time were you with Yotel or was Yotel 10, 10 years ago or, or, or maybe even more in your opinion? So, well, firstly, I'm glad you had this experience and it was in 2011 because that hotel opened in July 2011. Yeah. It was our first urban hotels, right? Yeah. We had a few hotels in airports before that. Uh, the concept was initially tested in Gatwick Airport, Heathrow Airport, Schiphol Airport. A lot of the DNA and a lot of the idea, a lot of the concept, a lot of the prototypes were designed within the airport's environment. Yeah. And then in 2009, we made a massive decision, which is what we've done in the airport, that can work in the city. Okay. And we had to make a statement, right? Yeah. And and we said, okay, so where can it start? And there was really two choices. Either we're in the city center of London or we're either we're in the city center of Ma Manhattan, yeah. New York. Yeah. And it happened to be the second one. Yeah. And that was the first time in a very long time in New York that a brand new hotel, purposely built, uh, was not a luxury hotel, mm -hmm. right? And it was the first time a hotel was being built in New York for quite a while. And certainly of an, not a five-star hotel was also quite quite new. And when that project was launched, we well, we didn't develop this project. Obviously, we're a hotel management company, not a real estate development yeah, yeah, company. Yeah, sure. okay. We worked with one of New York's largest developer, mm -hmm. uh, a company called Related. Yeah. And we gave them the brief of uh, what we wanted. Yeah. At the end of the day, they were the client. I mean, our shareholders were own, own these hotels. And yeah. it's like, 
this is what we want to design. And the related guys in charge of the project at the time looked at us again and said, are you sure you want to do that? <laughs> <laughs> because this is not what we were anticipating for our project. This hotel is part of a mixed-use development. I don't know if you remember, called yeah. Nomad. It's got apartments, it's got cinemas, it's got restaurants and oh, so forth. Of stuff, yeah. And, and so we're the hotel part of the general project. And they had anticipated, if I remember correctly, a 200, 250 room hotel um, with a couple of restaurants, probably, I don't remember. And our brief was we want 710 rooms mm. and just no reception, mm. just a very large restaurant, yeah. right? And um, and they were like, are you sure you don't want a reception? Yeah. I'm like, no, we don't need a reception. Uh, and Crazy. they were very, very, very surprised. That yeah. hotel opened in July 2011, and you must have been in there at, sure. the, at the, the very end beginning. End of the year. Yeah, yeah. yeah, end of the year, yeah. And it was a massive bang. Mm. I mean, I think nobody had anticipated this, this was possible. Credit to you know, what we had done before, the hotels we had within the airports already caught the attention of the industry because it was very strange. Yeah. Small hotels in an in a airport terminal, limited food and beverage, mm-hmm. uh, hourly booking engines yeah. instead of a day, daylight booking engine. So it was really, really already different mm-hmm. and intriguing for the hospitality industry. But it was very small. Yeah. It was very specific. It's like, yeah, but because it's an airport. Certainly here we are in the city mm-hmm. doing the same thing, right? Yeah. Granted, we did some adjustments because obviously running a hotel within a city center is slightly different sure, from from, a, from an airport. Yeah, but sure. generally speaking, the DNA was the same, and that's yeah. what happened. And the the re- welcoming of this hotel, reception of this hotel, uh, was just astonishing. So from day one, mm. everybody loved it. Yeah, right. And that was right. that was crazy. And you know what? What you just shared with me, your confession. Yeah. So many people told me about it. I said, you know, and you know, people. Our age, right? Probably, which you know, at the time we we're a bit younger, or yeah. studying, whatever. Yeah. And this place was really the place to be, right? Yeah. Everybody yeah. went either stay there or party there or yeah. dine there or met there. It was, a fun, there. Well. It, it was yeah, a fun place, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And um, and so so many people went. Oh, I remember when back in 2011 or 2012 or 13 when we used to go there and so forth. So it just had this massive impact. Mm. Nothing like that had ever been done, at least in New York, right? Yeah. Or hardly, hardly ever uh, something else. So it was a, a real game changer, and that kind of set the company on its course of where we are today. Yeah, right? that's that's and 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 how much ahead are we? Going yeah. back to your question, I'm sorry, it's a long answer to your question. <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> but uh, how ahead are we? I don't know, but certainly we're nobody had done that. Uh, the industry looked at us again at the beginning, and how many times I was told, "Oh, yeah, but this is a unique. This is just a one-off. Just not, not going to work that thing." Yeah. Or maybe it works because it's New York. That's yeah. it. It's not going to work elsewhere. Yeah. But then we did a second one, yeah. and then a third one, and then a fourth one, and a fifth one, and so forth. So it just went on, right? So it's yeah. like, well, it starts to work to a point where instead of saying, well, it's not going to work, people think, well, maybe we should do the same, yeah. right? <laughs> and um, and and <laughs> and today, today, obviously, we're you know there are you know many different types of brands out mm-hmm. there, and some of them clearly took some inspiration from what we did and yeah. are kind of following into the same course, which is great. It's very flattering, and it's you know the more we are, the better. Um, but certainly, we've paved the way to a new segment, mm-hmm. right? To a new segment within the industry. Which, um, which is exactly what we wanted to do. Because yeah. what was the view of uh, all our founding team and all of us who invested into this company and and are busy building it? Yeah, is hospitality can be different. Yeah, and and we, as I said earlier, we have to shake things up. It mm. just cannot always be these traditional hotels where, you know, where the ladies and the gentlemen, welcoming ladies and gentlemen, they're all very nice, all this stuff. But yeah. you know, most people don't relate to this, right? And and what they're expecting is. Their expectations from a hotel say is completely different, and they don't want to be either downgraded to some cheap budget horrible hotel yeah. in in some third tier location. No, 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 you want it all, right? Yeah. We're in a lifestyle where you want it all. You want to live in a great place. You want a great location. You want to be, um, you know, and you want you want to be excited. You want and, and you want quality. You don't want you won't feel you're, you're being budget. When what sure. kind of word is that, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um. And and that's what we achieved, I think, with the Hotel New York, and what this brand is achieving, and 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 I think. From being a bit, bit of like a a weird thing in the industry, mm. we became an industry leader yeah. in a segment, right? Yeah. And um, and that and that that was a complete change, right? Yeah. Uh, and that's what Yotel has become today, and 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 it's it's amazing to see that it's growing now in very different parts of the world. Yeah. Um, and and hopefully, you know, we continue paving the way through innovations and 
our new hotels and new markets in creating staying ahead of the of the of the, of the, pack. Of the, of the pack right yeah is there any uh, b before before i go on uh hubert is there any any location now that you that you guys are looking in or, or have already you know developed properties in that is of particular excitement to you not to downgrade the others but but is there a, is there a location where you think this is something that's particularly exciting for reason xyz yes um you know when we With the Hotel New York, yeah. the whole idea was, you know, within very busy, high-density, high barriers to entry market, yeah. we can create an exciting hotel mm. and still meet what the customer wants yeah. at the right price point, right? Yeah. So naturally, all our um, efforts, all our vision, all, all our work was um, towards this kind of cities. Mm -hmm. We were very focused on the New York, the San Francisco, the Chicago, the Miami, the DCs of the world, etc., yeah. etc. Et And it, similarly in Europe, London, Paris, etc. Yeah. And the great thing, as we you know, slowly but surely succeeded in this strategy, yeah. developing our brands in those great cities and those fantastic hotels that opened over the last few years, we also discovered that your hotel was even more than that. Mm. right? And, um, and yes, the natural equation for a hotel to succeed is typically in a very high density urban market mm -hmm. but not only right and that's that's the discovery of the brand today the brand is much more than that and can yeah. go into new locations so there are plenty of new locations which are exciting yeah. one of them uh which we're going to soon open um is our first hotel in japan mm -hmm. right uh completely new environment for us yeah but still in a similar um Time of high density yeah. kind of market, yeah. But we're also doing some projects in completely new, different types of locations, mm. uh, such as what we're developing in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, right. We're doing hotels in those new cities which are being built. Yeah. I mean, right now there's no urban environment. Yeah. Right. It's just like yeah. new environments being yeah. built. Yeah. New ecosystem, a very visionary, mm. uh, and we were honored to be selected as one of the brands because we were different, because yeah. we were innovative, because sustainability is important to our brand. Mm. And as a result, we were the natural choice to join some projects such as Neom, yeah. right, as the first hotel brand yeah. versus all the other brands around the world. So that's quite exciting as well. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. We'll talk about Saudi Arabia in, in, in just a second because I do want your, your, your thoughts on, on, on what specifically is going on. Before we do that, um, will we ever see a resort, a Yotel resort? There's already one. So the but it's a hotel pad. Okay. Right? Yeah. Um, a few years ago, we yeah. launched our extended stay brand, hotel yeah. pad, uh, um, successfully in a resort, yeah. not a beach resort, yeah. a mountain resort, yeah. uh, in Park City, yeah. in the US, in Utah, uh, exceptionally successfully. So it's a condominium hotel um, uh, development whereby yeah. we've had individual investors buying into the properties itself, yeah. but we also operate the hotel as um, a short stay accommodation solution for visiting Park City and all its fantastic ski slopes. So, and that's beach, what... Beach resort as well? Can you give me some... So for us, look, to be honest, we are, you know, we are looking at some beach resorts, but they are probably, you know, you know the solution of your hotel is really around uh, people traveling a lot yeah. and relatively in, short this, stays. Yeah, okay. So there are beach resorts like that. Yeah. Um, I'd call Dubai a beach resort. Yeah. Um, you know, it's an urban beach resort. And to us, it makes complete sense to do a project there. Um, typically, what we're looking for is markets, though, where you have a year-round uh, demand, yeah. which, yeah. which there are not that many beach resorts which can do sure. that, but you have some. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> so, um, you know, be it in Spain, be it in um, parts of France and, 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 and some parts of the US, but generally speaking... Yeah, we're more urban. So. You're more urban, mm -hmm. downtown. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about let's talk about Saudi Arabia, Uba, because because I do um, I do want to get your thoughts on this. When we last saw each other at, at the FHS in Abu Dhabi um, last year, um, I, I know that there's there's been uh, some hype, and I feel like you you feel the excitement about Saudi Arabia, the vision and what's going on there, not just in the Middle East anymore, but also around the world. People have picked on on what's happening. Mm -hmm. Walk me through. Your senses, and obviously, uh, you know, you you've been the the first hotel that was selected um, for in the in the Neom project, and you've been actively involved with the with the development in, in Saudi. I'm sure for for longer than than just the announcement. When you first heard of this, humor me by saying, even you, as a guy who's been around the industry and back, even you must have saw, thought there when you got back to your hotel room that night and thought, "Holy frick, this is wild." It is. It is completely wild, but it's not that surprising. I'll tell you what. Um, Saudi Arabia um, has been 
of great interest for your hotel. Yeah. Uh, for much longer than the announcement of Neom. Yeah. Okay. We're not in Neom because, oh, there was an RFP, we won it, and it's great. Yeah. Yes. That's fantastic. That happens, and it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, and sure. it's amazing to be the first hotel of this amazing yeah. project and, and so forth, which we are extre- extremely proud of. And, 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 and yes, it is an amazing achievement on its own. But the reason we're there, mm. firstly and fundamentally, is because we believe in the fundamentals of Saudi Arabia. Mm. Uh, and the fundamentals for us is demographics. Uh, and when we map, maybe a bit presumptuous, but when we kind of map the society in Saudi Arabia and how uh, the behaviors, the uh, be in terms of consumption, yeah. in terms of digital marketing, yeah. in terms of the, the requirement of the, let's say, younger population of Saudi Arabia, which makes up two thirds of the population. It's huge, yeah. It's actually quite similar to the global hotel customer profile. Mm-hmm. Actually, it's not just similar; it's just it's right. It's there. a perfect match. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Young, very dynamic, traveling a lot, looking for experiences very digital friendly, uh, very efficient, very independent um, and curious uh, and so forth. And and you keep on you know, comparing the two. It's like, well, there is a market in the world which kind of matches exactly the customer profile we're looking for, what we call the go generation. Yeah. It's Saudi Arabia. So back in 2009, I think, mm. we started to explore the possibility of growing our brand there. Wow, right? okay. Mm. Uh, oh, I'm pretty exaggerating a bit. Sorry, it's a bit later now. 2000... No. L- I take early, that early 2010s. Uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But it's but been, it's been 10 expo- years at yeah, least. Yeah, we started exploring it and because we thought it's actually astonishing. You've got 22 million people yeah. in the Middle East who would definitely match with our customer profile. And we started doing kind of customer focus groups and we started looking at the market when speaking with lo- local operators, mm-hmm. developers, owners, etc. And we decided that we should definitely roll out our brand over there. And that's before the announcement of all the big mega projects and so forth. And until today, uh, even though you've got a new breadth of uh, hotels now coming up in the market, hospitality in Saudi is still very traditional. Mm. Right. Okay. There's new hotels coming up, but they're still traditional luxury yeah, hotels. Yeah, yeah, sure, right. Sure, sure. And mm-hmm. and and there is demand for that. Mm-hmm. It's obvious, right? A lot of international demand for that, yeah. and some domestic demand for that as well. But the bulk of the domestic demand is not there. Mm-hmm. At least, this is not our reading. What they're looking for is a hotel type of product, yeah. and, that, and that's what is exciting for us. Saudi Arabia is firstly and foremost a domestic market mm-hmm. we want to tap into, and firstly and foremost in the natural. Urban markets of Saudi Arabia, be Jeddah or Riyadh or, um, or, or Aqaba or whatever. Uh, but as well, obviously, then what comes up afterwards, yeah. which is quite astonishing, is the announcement of all these new projects. Mm. So really, our strategy in Saudi Arabia is like two folds. One, we're continuing our kind of organic growth, targeting the domestic market within the existing urban uh, locations across the kingdom. And at the same time, we're working with the government sponsored. PF sponsored kind of type of projects, yeah. creating new destinations within within the country, yeah. and now it's just taking such a scale with you know the kingdom announcing objectives of having horn million tourism yeah. tourists uh, across uh, uh, the border that it's becoming a very interesting strategic uh, uh, decision for platform. us as a brand yeah, as a platform. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, very interesting. Before we before we talk a little bit about you, uh, Uber, and I, you know, can't can't spare you the trouble of talking us a little <laughs> bit through your career as well. Mm. Um, I, I I spoke to to um, a gentleman named Bill Heineken not too long ago from Minor Hotels, um, and he was he was on the podcast, and I asked him the same question I want to ask you because you and Minor have both done something that is pretty unique from what I've seen. Um, and maybe opposed to some of the other things that have happened in hospitality. And that's the whole aspect of branding and brands. Mm -hmm. You guys have stuck, despite the growth and despite the fact that you've added, you know, relatively to your size, a substantial amount of of hotels, you've stuck pretty much to your branding the the entire way through. Yes, there's a Yotel pad and okay, but, but it's, you know, you don't have six different brands yet. Is there a risk, and I mean this in, in the most literal of senses, is there a risk that we're currently over-branding hotels in a sense that, you know, if, if you look at the amount of brands that are out there, and I don't mean to flame any of the big guys that have that have got 30 plus brands, that's not the point at all, but, you know, how many brands does can the customer possibly understand? Yeah, I, 
I, I, I, there is too many brands, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, we're trying to cut the market in too many pieces. Yeah. Um, and or we're, um, I guess, uh, larger organization need to yeah. find ways to attract new customers and they yeah. need to find a sub segment within a sub segment within a sub segment and yeah. creating a brand around that. Um, and it's becoming a little bit confusing. Let's yeah. face it, right? And um, and the reality is, there's not so much differentiating many brands mm-hmm. nowadays. And I don't quite see what how investors make their decisions between one brand or the other yeah. because it's pretty much the same stuff and, yeah. and similarly for the customers. The uniqueness of your hotel, I suppose, or the, one of our specificity, yeah. not unique, but uh, one of our specificity is to be independent mm. and to be focused on our brand. Yeah. Right? So we leave breath uh, this brand 24-7. Every day. Yeah. We're passionate about it. Everybody at your hotel is passionate about your hotel and that's all we're thinking about from morning to night. Mm. So there's a real purity yeah. about this brand and the way we operate it. And, you know, we have a very deep understanding of the customer we're looking for. Mm. We have a very, we work very closely with our investment partners. Yeah. We're very closely with all our stakeholders in order to make a project successful and really create and occupy and dominate the segment we're after. Mm. Right. And that's the entire focus of the company. Yeah. We're not trying to open up a new segment, come back into a market, avoid yeah, yeah. an area of protection, or God yeah. knows what, to be able to grow the, the business, mm. which is good for my shareholders. We're, you know, every deal we do, every decision we make, be it operationally, commercially, investment-wise, has to work for all our stakeholders. Mm. And that sure. has been the approach from the day one. Yeah, sure. it, Including, for example, when we started focusing on technologies. Right? Yeah. Thought, what are you doing? I mean, you're a hospitality brand, not a technology yeah. brand. Yeah. Say, so, fine, but all everyone... All our customers are using technology 24 seven to the max to yeah. the max. Yeah. So we should do the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So in my opinion, yeah, there is, there is not a risk of having too many brands. I don't think that's an actual risk, but yeah. there's clearly uh, a risk of diluting the brand value yeah. uh, for groups with too many brands. Right? Yeah. And are we, are we, is it safe to say, um, well, that, that the uniqueness of the Yoto brand, and I think there really truly is a uniqueness there. Is something that will that will likely become probably even a competitive advantage for your guests, but also for potential investors, shareholders, and so on and so forth, because it is you know it's it's very clear what you get from your hotel. I think people that that are in the business or that that you know have a look at the business, they will it's it's very straightforward to understand who you guys are, what you stand for, and what the you know with a little bit of explanation what the hotel customer is. Is yep. that is that? Safe Absolutely, and 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 to me, I prefer brands that you know you either love or hate, yeah. right? because that's that's what a brand is supposed to be. Yeah, brand which are just average, well, they're so average, really, right? Yeah, so, yeah. and 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 I think that's what we're succeeding with Yotel. I mean, we have followers. We've got people who love Yotel yeah. nowadays, and in, in it, as the portfolio grows, we can see more and more repeat customers from one hotel to the yeah. other, yeah. and that's extremely interesting. And sure. you know, we clearly are mastering this segment we're after, mm-hmm. our good generation, and finding a recognition. In various parts of the world, which mm. that's the very exciting part about it. Yeah. The fact that you know now in the U.S. we've got followers makes sense. We've been doing business for over ten years over sure. there. We've got you know six, seven hotels uh, in operation and more coming. Yeah. But you know the same is not happening in Asia. Same is happening in Europe. Mm. So we are you know and it, you know it's not the only reason, but certainly to be focused on one brand and you know refining it and growing it and making it better mm. years after years explains a lot of our success. Yeah. And whilst we've maintained the DNA of the brand that was created from the very first hotel, from the very first airport hotel that we developed in 2008, yeah. until today, 15 yeah. years later, I would say that the DNA has remained intact, but there's been evolution. You know, obviously, because we've got, you know, so many customers, so many stakeholders nowadays, that we were able to refine it, refine yeah. the design, refine the processes, yeah. refine yeah. Yeah. our approach to technology, or repro- uh, refine how we build a hotel, mm. how we sell it, and uh, the and we re- and 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 again all for that one single brand. Yeah. So we now have reached a level, um, I think, in this segment that we're in, mm. uh, a level of expertise which is one to none. Mm. Incredible. Tell me um, a little bit about your career then. And I, you know, you'll, you'll have to forgive me for making you this compliment, but I think it's been quite remarkable because you've been involved with Yotel much longer than you've actually been. And I, and I feel like not everybody might know this, than you've been CEO because previously you were, you were involved with the, with the, if we want to call it that, the behind the scenes of, of, of Yotel a little bit. So you've seen this baby grow. Correct to to what it is today. Walk me through how that's been because you must you must sometimes you must pinch yourself in the morning, wake up and think, damn, I've seen this grow from you know mm-hmm. from what it is a, a little airport yeah. boutique little place 
to to a to a you know essentially a global player now and and someone that's you know a brand that's recognized by industry peers mm-hmm. and, and guests. Well, you know, after doing my usual you know or typical consulting years yeah. after graduating, yeah, uh, I was recruited to join. Um, Group in the Middle East, yeah. um, uh, the Eiffel Hotels and Resorts, controlled by the Al Bahar family in Kuwait. Yeah. And my role at the time was um, to head acquisitions for yeah. that group. Yeah. And it was quite interesting because I was quite straightforward to our chairman. It's like, I don't know anything about the Middle East. <laughs> so I think you're probably recruiting the wrong guy. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> And his answer was as straightforward as like, I'm not asking you to acquire anything in the Middle East. Mm-hmm. Uh, you need to go and look outside the Middle East. Yeah. And that's what you should be good at. Yeah. I said, well, fair enough. I can yeah. try or, that. I can, I can try, try that. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I felt, you know, I settled into my seat, mm. uh, moved to Dubai. Yeah. And um, quite convinced that I was the guy heading acquisition. Mm. And the first thing I'm told is, oh, by the way, we just acquired a stake in Yota. Mm. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> it's like, That's isn't that my job yeah. to do acquisitions? I mean, yeah. It's like, what's going on there? Like, yeah, no, it's a small deal. We've done that and, yeah. and so forth. And, and I was our chairman, obviously, telling me this. And yeah. so, oh, well, okay, so, well, you don't, you don't need to worry about it. It's like more like a VC deal. And, you know, you just focus on what you're supposed to do, which is to do, you know, international real Acquire, estate investment yeah, yeah, and sure. so forth. Yeah. So I said, fine. And at the time, I mean, that, that was literally a concept. You know, yeah. So it was not, there was no, there was no business. Yeah. Um, when was this roughly? That was in 2007. Okay. Right. Yeah. So a few months, a year before the opening of the first hotel. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, in Gatwick Airport. So indeed, from that point onwards, um, your hotel was somewhere on the map within the, uh, at the ecosystem I was working in. Yeah. Right. I was not at all. Involved into it, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, we, we, I knew about it and we, we heard about projects discussed and so forth, discussed yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, sure. You mentioned earlier on the, um, the opening of your hotel New York. Yeah. Uh, I was invited to this opening party, yeah. right? Although I had absolutely nothing, 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 yeah. absolutely. So it was very fascinating, right? To see this business growing. Well, you know, I was doing something completely different. Yeah. Um, and little did I know at the time that eventually I would, I would, uh, I would be heading this business unit. Mm. Uh, which happened in 2014, yeah. right? So it's quite a few years afterwards, yeah, right? Yeah. And um, and again, to be honest, when that happened, I, I, I felt very uh, honored to be offered the opportunity mm. to head up your hotel, but I first turned down the opportunity. <laughs> I, I, like, I think you've got the, the, you've the, got wrong, the, the wrong guy <laughs> again. <laughs> I'm saying, like, I don't, I don't know how to run a hotel management company. This yeah. is not what I do. I, I invest in real estate. I develop projects. I, yeah. I'd spend the best of five previous years running a... A real estate development company in Asia, mm. uh, running a hotel management company with a flagship in New York was, you know, it's like wrong casting. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and, uh, and then as straightforward, our chairman said, look, you know how to grow a business? Yeah. I think I know how to do that. It's yeah. like, well, that's what I'm asking you. I'm not Good asking luck. you to run a hotel. I'm asking yeah. you to grow this business into a international, uh, hotel platform. Mm. Your predecessors have done a fantastic job at putting the concept together. Yeah. You take it, run it, and make it into a big company. Yeah. You think you can do that? Let's, try. Let's, Let's try. try. Let's try. Let's try. Yeah. So this time I moved and I yeah. went to, um, to establish myself and my family into London. And yeah. then it's history. Took, took mm-hmm. it from there. Yeah. Very, very cool. I, I, we have to clear up a myth and maybe you can help us. Mm. The name Yotel, Yubel. Yeah. Can you tell us the background story of how the hell that happened? <laughs> Did uh, someone a drunk night out and someone forgot the age? Or? <laughs> uh, look, uh, it could be that it would be a fun story, but actually, it's not. It's um, so the Yotel. I mean, I'm not the founder of Yotel, right? No, no, I, I'm, 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 I'm very proud to be part of this growth story sure, and, and sure. establishing what the company is all about. But if essentially pre that infamous day when. I joined IFA and our chairman told me he bought a stake into this company. Yeah. Well, obviously, somebody founded it. And sure. it's a gentleman by the name of Simon Woodruff, yeah. who is still partially involved with us, right, as, yeah. the, as our founder. And Simon um, is a serial entrepreneur in the UK. Mm-hmm. And his previous business uh, that he had created very successfully was a restaurant brand called Yo Sushi. Uh-huh. Right? So, and... And so Simon, in between his English entrepreneurship and connections and growing his restaurant business, 
um, a lot of his inspiration clearly came from Japan. Yeah. Since he brought the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the sushi concept, the you know conveyor belt the belts right, and uh, restaurants. Yeah, yeah, we've all concept. been there in the yeah. airport and Heathrow when you go through security, it's on yeah, the right. Exactly. Yeah, I know exactly right. So he he brought that that was a concept that already existed in uh, in Japan to be yeah. honest. Right? But I guess he saw it so I can adjust that to more like a European style uh, style customer base in terms of food quality, servicing, whatever pricing. Yeah. It's a, and he brought it was exceptionally successful. I mean, we, I think we've all. As you said, been, been yeah, there, seen yeah, it. Yeah. I mean, it was a very exciting, one of the coolest brands, I suppose, in the late 90s, early 2000s. Yeah. And similarly, he got inspiration from his travel experiences that, you know, hotels could be different, right? Mm-hmm. And that's a guy who has never done a hotel in his life, right? Yeah. But he thought, I never did sushi before that. I guess I can and try it, the we, same we, we, we brought, you know, we brought that concept to Europe successfully. How about we take a new look at the at the hospitality um, industry. Yeah. And that's where it all started. And naturally, he called the brand Yotel. Yeah. When we took over the brand, so it took steps. From when, I, when, I, when, I, when I got involved, and essentially we acquired the whole business. So we, the Alba Har family went from being an investor in the business yeah. to the owner, the owner of the business. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's when I, I took over the management. Um, we thought about it. Like, does it make sense? Mm. To keep this name, to be f- to be perfectly honest, yeah. because as cool as it is, and you know, people had experienced yeah. Hotel New York, etc., yeah. it's a little bit confusing mm. as a as a as a brand and logo because we're actually not Japanese, yeah. and um, and we realized, but we had such a strong follower follower already, right? Mm. But as as I said earlier, had we not opened New York, then maybe it would have been a different story. Sure. But by the time we had opened New York, it had this massive bang effect, yeah. and we thought, well, you know what? This is the brand. This mm. is the name. We need to keep it. And thankfully, we did. Yeah, yeah. Mm. good choice. I was going to say good choice mm. along mm. the way. Very good. Um, well, a couple, a couple things I, I, I want to get your opinion on, and I, and I realize this might be um, particularly interesting to ask you about this because um, when we look at the traveler today, obviously he and she have have changed um, for, for for better or worse, and obviously COVID has accelerated some of that change at the time. And and now, if we look at travel today to this point, now you know there's some parts of the world that are still not fully back to travel. If we look at China, for example, the Chinese traveler is not yet, you know, back to the extent that he that he will be. Um, how has, in your very own opinion, how has hospitality maybe changed in terms of what it needs to offer uh, its travelers? Because there is, I feel like the offer has become, uh, and my question to you specifically is, has the offer become more you know, personalized, unique? Is that something that the guest is more looking for? Because, you know, again, 10, 15 years ago, it probably would have been unheard of if the uh, if the traveler of a business style and of a leisure style would have stayed necessarily in the same hotel. Yet there is now concepts like Yotel that manage that. Yes so, or no? That, so in my, my opinion, um, what happened uh, with the COVID pandemic yeah. and um, the massive impact it had on the industry um has been an accelerator it has accelerated trends that already existed yeah. it has forced a transition of yeah. the industry and for us as a brand it's been quite exciting because it's at, it has accelerated the brand the trends mm. we've built our company on yeah and we believe yeah. into totally right? agree. and people yeah. were wondering you know um if what we were doing was just an exception to the rule, yeah. uh, does it make any sense or not, yeah. etc. And suddenly, suddenly, in a year and a half, everything we had been arguing about, mm, working on, banging it. on, yeah. you know, suddenly it became natural. Yes, of course, this yeah. how it should be. I'll give you a, a set of examples. Yeah, please. Uh, firstly, on the, um, let's say, the facilities, design of hotels. We had integrated from day one that it is easier for a customer to decide when he or she wants to check in and to do it directly from a kiosk or a smartphone yeah. to facilitate the process, yeah. right? We thought it's common sense, and we didn't even invent that. It just came from the airline industry. Yeah. I mean, who goes to a check-in yeah, no, kiosk in, in an if airline? If you can avoid it. Yeah. If you can avoid it, you're yeah. going to do it from a smartphone, and sure. very happily, it doesn't matter if you travel in first class or in the economy, it yeah. doesn't matter EasyJet or British Airways, same story, right? Yeah. So the... Um, and it was such common sense to us to do that, we just integrated it from day one into our hotel room. And for a very long time, I kid you not, 
the industry was looking at this. These guys don't understand what hospitality is all about. It's yeah. like it's about human contact and talking. It's like there's nothing exciting in checking into a hotel, except if it's probably like a super luxury resort somewhere on an Different island, story. maybe. Yeah. But generally speaking, if you check into a hotel, it's just not. Ex- it's a waste of time, mm. right? So if you can just avoid wasting time, usually people are quite happy about it. So from being the weirdos doing something strange, mm. now everybody does that, right? Yeah. Because we have to go touchless, yeah. right? COVID. Uh, sure. we have to avoid contacts and so forth. So certainly it's integrated within the industry. Yeah. Simple example. Uh, the horrible term of blazer, mm. which we always believed in, right? Customers nowadays don't have only one single reason to go somewhere. Yeah. I mean, at least certainly our customer target is typically independent in every possible way Mindset. you can think about it, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, and we'll probably go travel to New York because I've got a business meeting. I want to see a friend and I also want to see an exhibition and go shopping. Yeah. For reason. Bum. And I don't want, I don't have much time for that. So yeah. I want a hotel which is efficient, which is cool, which is well located, so not too expensive because yeah. I've got all these other things to do, etc. So we always thought, you know, we've, we've never segmented our demand between like leisure and business. Mm. Like it's meaningless because if we start doing that, the answer is so confusing because everybody does a bit of everything. Well, nowadays with uh, with uh, post COVID, it's like completely accepted yeah, that this is the trend. Mm-hmm. Um, the average length of stay, mm-hmm. right? Uh, I'm a believer. I'm actually, it's just facts. It's not, it's not a question of believing that there's more, obviously more and more people traveling. Mm-hmm. But the difference between now and be- yesterday is that the average length of stay keeps on reducing, mm-hmm. right? So it does change the role of a hotel. What is a hotel supposed to do if you only stay for one night mm-hmm. versus one week? Right. Yeah. It's a completely different role than we have. Um, well, that again has accelerated. I mean, and it's actually a strange consequences of COVID. You would have thought the other way around. Yeah. Not at all. People are, I mean, we've saw it post COVID. People have come back traveling as a surge yeah. traveling, but on shorter periods of time as yeah. well. So again, the, the concept of a hotel which meets these requirements is even more relevant. Um, the concept, I mean, the massive impact it has on work. Work life, which is a bit linked to the point I was making earlier about the infamous blazer yeah. segment. Um, you know, working from home has become, bit, uh, yeah. s- or partially from home, or partially not from the office at least, mm. has become so natural, right? Multitasking, multi working, doing different jobs at the same time, partially from an office, partially from a work, uh, co working space, partially from home is so important. So suddenly the hotel needs to be able to deal with that. Mm be it from the access to technologies or space or RS, you can do your work or do your interviews. We all work um, nomadically nowadays. nowadays, And that's what the hotels need to integrate. All of these trends for us were quite clear, to be honest, Mm. um, from the very beginning of our foundation, uh, when Simon started this business, which we integrated throughout our growth. And we always banged and told our investment partners and stakeholders, look, this is where the world is going. That's why hotels need to be this way. Yeah. And with COVID, we've seen this great accelerator. So it's like, oh, but we, of course, right? It's yeah. all natural. It was not natural to have this discussion in 2019. Yeah, yeah, sure. It is now like obvious, yeah. which is great. Yeah. Mm. Um, a couple a couple things, and I'm conscious of time, um, Hubert, because just like that, 40 minutes are gone. So um, here is here is two more things I want to I wanna challenge. Um, first of all, walk me through how much of a PR phenomena the robot that is in the bottom of the New York hotel <laughs> that sorts your luggage. And I can only recommend, I'm sure there's, I don't have checked, but I'm sure there's countless YouTube videos of this. <laughs> um, and I remember, because coming back to when I started with a confession at the beginning, when I, the day we left, our, our, the flights out of the US back to Europe are usually in the evening. So we, we had a day to spare. Mm-hmm. And, we, and we asked the, 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 the lady at the, at the hub in the, um, in the arrival floor and said, can we, can we leave our suitcase? And she case, you know, there's a, there's a space downstairs. And she said space. She, I remember this very clearly. She did not say what was about to, to happen. And so we get downstairs and this thing is absolutely ginormous, first of all, and you stick your suitcase in through a window of sorts. Mm. And then it, it, it manages it around yeah. at a speed that is crazy. How important is it for a company, um, especially in hospitality and even more so a hotel brand these days to have, certain gimmicks whether that's you know the 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 fact that i'm not sure that's still the 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 official man but at the time you know yotel was the the brand yotel was basically purple it was drenched in purple which was not necessarily a color where people would have said this is a great choice for you know they would have said a blue a red a green you know not some sort of mixed yeah why take risk right yeah just go for traditions yeah um the robot on its own that yobot we call it yeah um is um it's kind of a symbol of what Yotel is all about. Yeah. 
you can do things differently. Yeah. Right. That's what it. That's what it basically means. You know, and the the point is, you can store luggages in a very different way. Give right? it to somebody, Which is, or you know, so instead something. of carrying a heavy suitcase, you can have a robot carrying your suitcase. Right. Yeah. I mean. But it goes, it's way beyond that sure. actual practical element. Yeah. But we're trying to still solve something practical, <laughs> right? But in a completely different way. Yeah. And we went completely out of board, right? With yeah. this one. Because, you know, it's, it's a statement. Sure. It's a statement. But it's a statement like what the Yobot does to your luggage yeah. is what your hotel does to the to industry, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it, and it really, uh, synthesized our approach. And that's why you have, Weirdos like me running a company like Yotel, which we're not a typical hotelier. Yeah. Which, you know, we can, we're looking at things differently. Mm. That's the, our vision for this brand is different Change from it your, your yeah. traditional. We go for purple. We don't go for blue. Blue is boring. Everybody goes for blue. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's comfortable. You ask most people's preferred color, blue, yeah. right? Yeah. So we can just do like everybody else and continue doing blue. Well, yeah. you know what? We're going to do purple. Yeah. It's different. It's exciting. It's actually very refreshing and relaxing for our customers. So the the whole idea is not just to do things differently for the sake of doing things differently. Yeah. It's more like, a, like we're we're focused on tomorrow's traveler mm. rather than yesterday's traveler. Yeah. Right? That's the beauty of Yotel. That's the beauty. That's a fabulous chance of working and leading Yotel. Um, is we started with a fresh uh, blank piece of paper, Sheet right? Of paper. We we didn't we we didn't have our uh, um, hands tied up. Uh, According to certain concepts, certain vision, certain way, certain legacy, we so you know what? Forget about all that. Let's just look at our most important stakeholder, yeah. which is our guest. Yeah. Let's also understand our second most important customer or as important uh, stakeholder, our owners, yeah. and how do we make the two work together in uh, uh, for the future? And and Yobot is a you know is about innovation. Mm. It's about a statement of saying we can do things differently. Mm. And, you know, do we have your bots in every single hotel? We don't. No. There are others. Mm. Um, actually, one of our hotels, which is opening later this year in Bangkok, yeah. will have a Yobot as well yeah. uh, because the owners felt it has to be there. It's yeah. really part of the brand and so forth, which is great. Um, but it's not a must-have. The whole point, is, but what is a must-have is let's be innovative. Mm. Let's do things differently. Let's uh, Let's rethink a process. You know, how often are we told, but you know, this is how it is done in our country. Mm. Like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Yeah. But you know what? Things are changing Change and they're not just up. changing in Europe or in yeah. the US. They're changing everywhere. And you better be part of tomorrow's bus than what you think it was the train that left behind. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Final question. Um, if, if I may, and this is, you know, a very future oriented question, but I feel like you're the right guy to ask. So humor me with this. The traveler of tomorrow that you just mentioned, what's he like or she? He's not very loyal. Yeah. Um, he wants more and more and more. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a very interesting question. If you ask any customers, what do you want? Yeah. An experience. Yeah. Define the experience. Difficult. Yeah. Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> Silence. <Show me>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, which to me is, is, is very representative of the challenge ahead. It's like, naturally, with access to information, with social medias, with people sharing their experiences, mm -hmm. with... Uh, videos with interviews, podcasts, and so forth. Everybody knows everything. And as a result, everybody wants everything immediately. Yeah. So, uh, it, the successful hotel, uh, to, uh of tomorrow, um, needs to also, I think, be humble in what we want to achieve. Mm. I cannot solve someone's trip from A to Z. No, no. Right? Sure. Uh, we're, we want to provide the best hotel experience for that customer who wants a 24 hour stay in New York where they're going to, Work, play, uh, visit, uh, shop, and, uh, shop and everything. Yeah. And, and how do we get this done? That's what we're trying to resolve. Mm. Uh, well, thank you, first of all, for your time. Uh, just like that, like I said, more than 40 minutes have passed. I have a, a small tradition in the episodes that I host on Smack. Uh, I'll ask you three or four short questions at the end, and you'll, you'll try to give me a, a, sh a short-ish answer. Um, your favorite hotel outside of the hotel world? It's very different from your hotel. That's that's okay. okay. We can rock with that. Uh, the uh, um, Amman Resort. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, a destination doesn't necessarily have to be one where your hotel is present. That is that is particularly resembled with you through your travels over the years. A, a place on the planet where you think something that's that deserves far more recognition than it currently gets. 
Mm. I've, I've got different ideas. Yeah, right? that's the, the, that's uh, so, I'll take more than one as well. Uh, right. um, I'm, I spent a long part of my career in Asia. Yeah. So I'm extremely excited about what we're doing there. And I think Bangkok is an amazing city. Yeah. And it was a l- very difficult choice to decide if we go there or not. And I think it's going to be an amazing place okay. where, where to be. A specific culinary experience that you had at some point in your career, a specific experience that you that you encounter. It can be anything from street food to gourmet and everything in between. The best experiences to me are street food. Yeah. Okay. I'm not uh, very much into luxury, big gourmet, big gourmet yeah. restaurants. Yeah. I think street food is always the best, be it you know, in Asia or anywhere else. Yeah. Uh, again, uh, repeating myself, I think pretty one of the best place to eat street food is in uh, is, is it, in Bangkok. Is right? in Bangkok for sure. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for your time, Ibel. Um All the best for what's ahead in, in, in this year and beyond. And uh, I hope to see you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. That's it for this episode, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to share your thoughts on this episode and everything else that is going on at Smack with us by checking out our website at smack.media or connect with us on LinkedIn, YouTube, or Instagram. We'll see you next time. Hey there, you still here? I'm still here, amazing. We really hope you liked the show. If so, comment below, like, follow, and share all your thoughts with us. And don't forget, there's much more social media channels out there, and we wanna have you on all of them. So stay a friend of Smack, and I hope you see you again.